We're going to talk about sound this week, and uh, we're going to go over just some uh, basics and create some sounds today. Uh, audio signals are vibrations that travel through the air and other materials, and uh, we can characterize sound as uh, rapid but measurable changes in pressure over time. If we plot the change in pressure as a function of time, we get waveforms that look like uh, this picture over here. In the air, we can think of this, these pressure variations as just continuous in time and, uh, and pressure. But when we want to put this information into a digital computer, uh, we, we have no way to represent truly continuous things. So just like we break up images into pixels, so images are very um, quantized and discrete, and even, even colors are integers. You know, we represent them uh, with intensity going from 0 to 255. Uh, so they're, they're finite steps in color intensity. We have the same thing with sound, that uh, audio waveforms are sampled which means uh, we measure them uh, at a very rapid rate, um, often 44,100 times per second. That's the, a very standard rate that comes from compact disks and uh, is, is widely used on laptops and other applications. Uh, so anyway, so we're measuring this, this change in pressure uh, very uh, rapidly and uh, the, uh, we measure it by recording an amplitude, which so amplitude refers to how much pressure there is, and we measure this pressure relative to atmospheric pressure, or just you know the normal pressure at that at that moment due to the air, even in silence. And so, relative to that um, kind of normal atmospheric pressure sound waves actually increase the pressure and decrease pressure. So we have positive and negative values representing amplitude. So in this picture we have a very crude um, approximation of this um, uh, continuous red uh, signal uh, pressure. And so we get this little uh, kind of stair-step representation. But of course if we measure very accurately, uh, for example, with 16 bits, which is which is common, uh, then these uh, little st stair steps are extremely fine, and we're also measuring very um, uh, frequently, and so uh, there the steps are fine in the time axis as well. Um, okay, so I've used this term sample already, and. Um, I want to point out that the, the word sample in modern uh, English really has two different definitions. Uh, the original definition of sample was, was exactly what I said uh, back here. Each one of these little measurements is called a, an amplitude sample. Well, this led to some synthesizers that would um, sample audio signals, and these synthesizers uh, were called samplers. You could you could um, measure samples, in other words, record digital audio, and you could play those samples back. So these were called samplers, uh, and and then sort of in popular culture, people that picked up these samplers started um, kind of getting confused, and or maybe never knew what the term meant in the first place, and thought that the entire recording was a sample. So uh, that's become very common terminology. So, um, uh, so we have, uh, we have these, these samplers and people began referring to these short sound recordings as samples. Uh, for example, a flute sample or a piano sample or a sample library. And uh, DJ culture began using samplers to repurpose commercial recordings. And so that's these uh, short excerpts of music have been referred to as samples. And uh, Okay, so there is some confusion there. I'm, I'm going to try to just use sample to re refer to these single numbers. 
The next topic is how do we do multi-channel audio? We've seen how we deal with, with a single sound, but what if we have stereo? So there, there's sound, different sounds coming out of different speakers. Well, stereo is just uh, two simultaneous recordings uh, so that we record a left channel and a right channel and we have a sequence of samples representing what comes out of the left speaker and a sequence of samples representing what comes out of the right hand speaker and these pairs of samples are called frames so a, st a stereo recording or a multi-channel audio recording is a sequence of frames where each frame has the sample value uh, from each of two or more channels and so here's, here's what that representation looks like. Um, it's a very simple concept. Uh, the terminology is, is good to know, though. These are, um, here we have frame 0, frame 1, frame 2, and so on, up to frame n. And each frame has a left channel and a right channel for a stereo. Uh, let's move on to uh, sample rate. This is really a whirlwind tour of digital audio. But sample rate is the speed at which we are measuring samples. For example, 44.1 kilohertz, 44,100 hertz, um, is the is a very standard sample rate. Hertz means per second. So, how many times per second are we measuring sound? And uh, sample rate determines what frequencies can be recorded. So if you're recording speech, uh, speech sounds pretty good sampled at, um, uh, oh, anywhere like 8 to 16,000 samples per second is common because speech does not really have important high frequencies. And telephone systems sample even more slowly, um, maybe between 3,000 and 4,000 hertz. Um, cell phones are a little uh, trickier, but um, they also um, are not using uh, high sample rates and high frequencies. If you want to uh, record music at high fidelity, then music has uh, frequencies, contains frequencies and information up to about 20,000 hertz, which is about the limit of human hearing. And um, so there's this really nice rule which says if you want to capture frequencies up to some frequency x you must sample at 2x so that's why in order to capture the full range of human hearing up to 20,000 hertz or so we um, frequently use sample rates of 44,000 that's a little more than double um, so it gives us a little a little cushion and on the other hand, the phone company might um, only care about uh, speech signals up to about 4,000 hertz. And so a very a standard sample rate for a telephone, for digital telephones, is 8,000 hertz. Uh, and again, this is very analogous to images. So we think of, of sampling uh, audio across time, but when we when we do digital photography, we're really sampling uh, a continuous field of intensity across space, across the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And so the sample rate, the analogy to sample rate in audio is uh, pixels per inch in in uh, digital photography and digital and, and computer graphics. And higher frequencies in audio uh, correspond to fine detail in images. And of course, the more pixels per inch, the more fine detail you can get. Just like the more samples per second in audio, the more high frequencies you can represent. All right, so that's a very quick introduction uh, to some audio concepts. We're going to now look at how to put audio into P5JS sketches. And I'm going to show you a couple of demos, and then I'll um, end. And you can implement some of these on your own and try it out. Uh, the first thing that we have to know is uh, that to do all of this stuff, uh, we're going to need 
a new template. We've been using the what, what we call the min or minimum template, which only supports uh, simple graphics. The audio and some other stuff are included in the all template or template all, and you can find those on the class website. Uh, but just keep in mind that you're, you're going to need that. Uh, the index.html file is actually grabbing a different uh, set of libraries. But once you get that, uh, you can create a sketch. So here, um, let's see. Let's go back to this one. Okay, uh, this is the sketch that I, on the right, I have running in a browser on the left. And uh, let's, first of all, what this sketch does is it um, loads a sound from a sound file and plays it when you click the mouse. So let's add some documentation here. Um, load sound file and play when you click the mouse. All right, and we'll go over here and load that. It says click me, I'm going to click. So you get the idea. Um, how do we do that? Well, we're Sounds are a little bit like images. We can use the preload function to load sounds, and sounds get loaded from URLs. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this in Firefox so that I can run locally without a server or anything, but um, you'll probably have to set up a server, uh, a local server, in order to run, uh, in order to do audio. And all the things we learned about putting sounds up on uh, WordPress apply here that in order to get, if you want to put sounds um, in blogs on WordPress, you'll have to upload the sound to WordPress, find the URL, and then put that into your sketch. Uh, so with that, we load the sound and we get a value which is of type sound. Uh, just like when we were loading images, we got values of type image. So we're going to save the sound in a variable which I called whoop. Uh, you can control the volume by uh, using the set volume method on on sounds. And the only other thing really new here is when the mouse is pressed uh, we call whoop.play and that will just uh, play the sound file. While the while the sound is playing, everything else is running. So you're getting a draw command. Uh, the draw function is being called. And uh, mouse press is being handled, and so on. All right, so that's um, how you can play sound files. The other uh, thing we're going to do is look at how to uh, synthesize a continuous tone. I'm going to change over here. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening. I have uh, frequency varying from bottom to top, and amplitude uh, silent on the left, loud on the right. All right, so hmm, let's see if I can get the sound turned off and get over here and look at the program. Good. Uh, so. Uh, what we're doing there is playing uh, what's called an oscillator. It's, it's a tone generator, and uh, we assign the oscillator to a global variable. It's called my tone. And we first, in setup, we create it just one time. We create one oscillator, and we're going, it's an object, and we'll use it for the entire sketch. Um, we do that by calling new p5.oscillator, uh, saving the resulting object in my tone. And then we just uh, change properties of my tone to control the sound. So we set the type to be sine, uh, which is producing a sine wave. Uh, we set the frequency initially to be 800. Oh, and we also have to tell it to start. That's very important. All right, so now we have the sign that's starting and playing at 800 uh, cycles per second. Uh, and then in the draw function, we are changing the amplitude of my tone, and we are changing the frequency of my tone. And the amplitude it varies from 
you can see here from 0 to 1. We're, we're computing mouse x divided by width, so that x controls amplitude. Um, we're constraining it to be 0 to 1. The frequency, which we control with the y axis, is um, measured in cycles per second. Um, on a laptop speaker, 200 is a pretty low frequency. Um, a thousand or a couple of thousand is, as you heard, is a pretty high note. Uh, so we're mapping mouse Y uh, to vary from 200 to 1200 in this sketch. And of course, you could change that uh, if you wanted to. Um, and that's about all there is uh, to this. So I'm going to end this here and let you download some uh, the, the new template and set up the sketch and uh, try to make some sounds.